All right, good morning, folks. Lesson number 12 <coughs> with Piper here. I just caught her up, did a little bit of playing with her ears. We had another kind of a violent reaction when I went to touch her ears again this morning. So that was her first lesson today. Get back on the ears again and settle her down. You know, I don't know what the issue is all of a sudden with her ears. She just wants to kind of still trip off the line every time you do something new. And once you do it two or three or four times with her and get her to understand that it's not something new that's going to hurt her or whatever, and seems to be better now after five minutes of wrestling around with her here like I did yesterday. All right. We had a pretty decent day with her yesterday. Got some trotting in, a little bit of a half-baked humpy lope, trying to get her to get her feet underneath her and figure things out. <coughs> So we'll see what today brings. So far, she didn't start out exactly on the right foot. Right. Sometimes that happens too. be some issue with her head. Her issue with her ears that something's happened. You know, who knows? Sometimes you just have to work with what you got. And be expecting that outburst every so often. She's kind of proven time and again that she's leaning towards being more reactionary than some horses, whether that's ingrained in her personality that she's just that way, or whether that's all stuff that's been added into her baggage, it's hard to say. You know, it's, it's just kind of a guessing game sometimes with these guys because you don't know their history and you don't know their baggage that they're coming in with and you don't know a lot about their upbringing or their past experiences or past training or whatever. And, you know, and the less homework you do, and the more your emotions take over, then your investigative abilities to try and check out these horses before you go and buy them, or whatever. And it's not just with rescue horses; or it's with all horses. You need to be, you know, do your due diligence and find out as much about these horses as you can and try and match your abilities to the horse that you're looking at getting so that you can get along safely and not get yourself hurt and get a horse that is beyond your control. And this mare has a tendency sometimes to trip off the line and get a little bit out of control and if you're not if you're not strong enough sometimes or knowledgeable enough to be able to control that reaction from your horse and stay in there and hang tough and be able to 
get their head pulled around and settled down and continue on with what you're doing without allowing yourself to get more upset or more afraid in what she's doing, you're not going to make any progress with them. You're just going to exacerbate the issues that are already there. So, something to think about if you want to try and play horse whisper. <coughs> said before she's of the nature that you can get her settled down and she'll regroup and <coughs> allow things to progress with less and less reaction to it but you still have to be aware of that initial reaction and that initial reaction to things sometimes can be pretty violent And you got to keep yourself in a safe spot to be able to deal with that and get her back down to a level where she's thinking and, and relaxing rather than continuing to spool up or think about what upset her the first time. played five minutes with her ears and I go back again and she has a, she wants to start getting a little hanky with me again yeah. you know and because she settles back down and allows me to do it I don't think that that I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with her ears here. I just think maybe she hasn't had her ears played with all that much in terms of trying to get her prepared to put a bridle on her. And she might, you know, a horse's ears are one of the most sensitive parts in their body and when you start messing with them you got to start when they're young to get them used to you know playing around with them and under and get them to understand that they're not threatened by playing with their ears issues and other stuff and sometimes it makes for a kind of touchy situation. Okay. But you know this is all part of her learning curve to be able to figure these things out.
you know, what she did with the with her ears yesterday, and she kind of, you know, sucked back, tried to yank away until I was able to get around her and get a hold of her head and just keep my hand up there on her head and get her used to it. She did the same thing today. And it was probably about the same. Oh level of violence and reaction that she did yesterday, but this time I had a hold of her halter in anticipation of that, so she wasn't allowed to get completely away from me like she did yesterday, and I was able to get her head pulled around a little better. But being in close with her I had to get into her halter this way and stay in here close to try and keep her down so that she wouldn't wear up on me and flail away and get herself really, really spooled up. But we got through it, so I don't hold any grudges. We're just going to have to keep working harder on things. try without the flag today. See what happens with the Almost always it's the reactionary side that she winds up to. And she's just not as willing to take the directions. on that right side. And the bridling stuff, you know, is right related to that as well. You know, because I reach over the top of her head and go to touch that opposite ear and that's when she starts to trip off the line. And it's like I've been saying with her, you know, it's going to take tons and tons and tons of work on that, on that off side to get her conditioned to accept things over there with reduced vision or no vision, depending on how the future goes with her. And whether she's going to have the mentality and the capability to do that over time, that remains to be seen. But you know, it's 
a new day and every day brings something different. You know, it's possible that earlier on she was lunged, and that's how she learned how to lunge, was just get a lunge whip taken to her, or flag, or a lot of pressure, or whatever, and that was really the only thing they could get done with her, is just let her charge around in circles. Pretty touchy today for some reason. I didn't do anything to you. You're kind of doing this on your own. So what's the deal? Hmm? I think part of the reason why she stops like that, rather than just calmly going around, is she still doesn't trust anybody on this on this side really, without her being able to get a glance of you with her good eye. Because when she hits the end of that lead a little bit, her head comes in, she can tolerate it for just a little bit without getting herself wound. But then she has to stop and take a look at you to make sure things are okay.
Bit of a regressive day today, for whatever reason. You know, I talk a lot about having to control your emotions and when you're working with these horses, but sometimes even for me that gets a little tough to do when you get into spots like that. Alright, go ahead and break it and we'll start up again. <laughs> 